you know, it's interesting. The tide is turning when it comes to, well, the tide is turning in broader sectors than just this here channel. When it comes into this sort of judge judification of um, our legal system and the response to the rioters. And we keep, you know, I always know when something funny is going on because you suddenly get a load of opinion polls telling you that all the public support this stuff. And you're like, hmm, funny that because every single person I seem to have spoken to thinks it's a bit dystopian. I completely agree. I think um, this is what always happens. Um, there's a, there's a, so many different problems and so many different issues. So what often happens, it feels like a bit of divide and rule on all of this. So with this particular story, we have to segment it rather than just putting it in one place and then everyone gets smeared as even raising a topic that they might be far right or racist or whatever. Actually, what we need is a grown up conversation. If you start having grown up conversations on these topics, then you might actually learn a thing or two from what the other side are doing, have some respectful debate and then lessen the division. And immigration is a perfect example of that. Immigration, you cannot sustain 1.9 million net migration over the last three years. You just can't. And so therefore, that conversation has to be had without individuals being smeared as far right or racist. Because most people who are concerned about it aren't. They're concerned about their communities. And they're concerned about the communities in a number of different areas, not just immigration, but on failing NHS, crumbling schools, crime we've already touched on, issues with you know the cost of living crisis, high taxation, water, blah, blah, blah. But we don't have discussions about the root cause of the problems. And that was one of the great things about the chat earlier. We're having about terms of discussion about social media and mental health. We're talking about it in the round. And so therefore, going back to immigration, we need to start talking about this in the round, in a grown-up way where people aren't smeared. Now, the separate issue, obviously, of, of the riots. Now, the riots... Anyone who's committing thuggery absolutely has to be called out. The right. police need to investigate get, get that. It has to be condemned. But hold on, so, so talking about Cannot, that, right? But let, yeah, let's look at a particular can... example, because this is from The Spectator. And in this article, um, it sort of draws the reader's eyes to the attention um, of one particular case. And uh, they'd start off by saying, justice must be served, of course. Every took, everyone who took part in rioters' violence of recent weeks should feel a copper's hand on their shoulder. But the white goes on to say, I'm worried that justice is turning into something like vengeance. That this isn't just law and order, but also a kind of centrist vengeance against the lower orders. And points out that Stacey Vint has been jailed for 20 months for pushing a wheelie bin at a line of riot police before falling flat on her face. She pushed, pushed a wheelie bin at a line of police with, you know, all the sort of tools and armour. They look like, you know, sort of Judge Dredd or something. Uh, she pushed a wheelie bin at them and she's got 20 months in clink. I bet old old knife on two wheels probably will just get, you know, a, 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 a stern warning. This is what's mad. I spoke to um, Norman Brennan yesterday. He's been looking into knife crime for 30 years after having actually been stabbed himself in the line of duty. And he said most of the time, if you're found with a sort of lethal weapon, a knife on the street, you get the equivalent of a parking fine. Yeah, old wheelie bin weirdo, 20 months in clink. That is ridiculous. You know, there's got to be a separation about in terms of, you know, acts of genuine violence and tent and thuggery. And they have to be on top of that. But then there's a separate area. There's like the, the, the little things basically do not deserve those sentences. And, and that's a waste of police time as well, resources, considering they're badly stretched at the moment. And then there's the final aspect, and it's about the enormous communication around the whole thing, where it becomes like a yet another culture war. And meanwhile, we have governments for decades who are letting our country rot on a number of different issues Immigration is one aspect of these talks, so many others. I mean, well, everyone else is in another room having a squabble about who's right and who's wrong and what culture are we talking about. And actually what we should be doing, the one thing that unites us all, and from whatever side of the debate, is our governments, not just national government, but also local governments as well, are failing us on so many different levels. I was reading, for instance, um, today and yesterday about the state of our local authorities. They, some of the local authority chiefs are saying that one in five might go bust this year. So where does that leave even more services, whether it's to do with the roads oh, or the beds? Don't you worry about serious, that, James, because you must care. remember, in Sir Keir Starmer's uh, first speech, the King's speech, laying out his policy agenda, apparently it's the local authorities who've now got to deal with everything instead of the government. 
there's, there's no money left for them. Right. I mean, that's the legacy of the and, previous okay, government. So there's, 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 also, there's two problems with that. It's the legacy of the austerity of the previous yeah. government and local authority costs, but mm. also mismanagement within local authorities right. as well. Okay, and I see that little thread that I've just spotted coming out here. I'm going to pull on this a little bit, right, and, and see where it leads us. Mm. Because there's certainly been reports... <clears throat> so I'm choking on my tea. There have been reports coming from certain governments. You talk about mismanagement of finances... There have been reports which seem to me teetering on the edge of uh, corruption, essentially. Backhanders, dodgy contracts. There are certain councils out there who seem to be staffed by, you know, one man and all of his mates, rather but than actually, this, you know, there, there's something very funny going on in certain local authorities, isn't there? Yeah, but you can apply that to national government. Look at the PPE scandal as well. I mean, it's all, all you know, right through the chain of command of, of governments, there's issues with that. And ultimately, this comes back to something that I have been blethering on about for quite some time, that our social contract is failing us. And by what I mean by that is our, we pay our taxes and we expect a return on our investment from good management of all aspects of government, local government, national government, and how they spend our money. And instead, what we get is, you know, money, for instance, Labour, Labour, New Labour government, 11.6 billion is going to be spent in overseas net zero stroke climate aid. And meanwhile, millions of our pensioners are going to lose their winter fuel payments. So we have got to find a way of getting back to what government should be about. They don't rule us. They serve us and they have to be accountable in terms of the money that we give them. And rather than them pushing for more forms of surveillance and digital ID, wouldn't it be great in an ideal world where actually digital ID and surveillance should be on our governments so we can assess exactly how well, they're spending uh, our money yeah, so I'm we can see if we're getting a return on investment? Governments shouldn't rule us, they should serve us. But I don't feel that that's the sort of particular bent we're currently getting from uh, Sir Keir Starmer right now. And if you want to sort of encourage him to soften up and listen to our issues and take some of the things seriously, I think he thinks a lot of them are far right.